This comes to us from Spatial Analysis, Brian Campbell. Do you think a UFC or any other promotion has the obligation to step in and stop the fight? Well, we're going to do this on odds and ends. We might as well, we'll do, we'll do it now. now. Uh, step in and stop the fight when the referee is clearly unable to see or understand the circumstances inside the cage. Let me set this up if I may. So I looked this up. I think the guy's name was Andrew Glenn is the referee. They're talking about the Mike Davis-Thomas Gifford fight, which took place on the prelims of the UFC Tampa card. If you guys didn't see, here's how it went. Mike Davis beat Thomas Gifford from pillar to post in all three it, rounds. It took about three minutes for the announcers and everyone watching at home to realize that this was going to end badly. This is completely one-sided. Right. Davis is lighting him up at will. And Trevor Whitman made a good observation, which is that when you get hit and it looks like you have a loose neck, where it pops like that, that's when the ones are really landing. Michael Bisping, to his credit, the entire time was alarmed by the whole thing. That referee, Andrew Glenn, was supposed to, I don't know if you know this, Brian Campbell, yes. was supposed to referee later in the night and got pulled because of what a bad job he did. It was unconscionable. I have a lot of ideas about this one. I'll let you go first. Uh, yeah, this, look, one thing, uh, boxing, boxing's got a lot of problems, and people are getting hurt left and right. We're going to talk about it on this show, and we just had a couple deaths recently. Yeah. But boxing's starting to realize a little bit more. You see much more towels being thrown in, in boxing than you do in MMA, and you see much more, hey, I know you're not on the verge of getting stopped here, but we're going to jump in and stop it. You've taken too much punishment. I don't see that in MMA. And to MMA's, I guess, credit or luck, that obviously doesn't have the same terms of uh, long-term really bad situations of, of deaths in the cage or right after. But moments like this are going to get us closer to it, and you not only have to rag on the ref, don't you have to rag on the coach for continually? So here's the deal. Gifford I'll showed about that in insane heart. And the thing was, he would get lit up with five, six punch combinations in which you're thinking that would knock out anybody else, and then he'd almost look like he was back in, not back in the fight almost winning it, but back in attempting some kind of takedown or some kind of submission, which unfortunately gave him more life. Yes, I feel like the commission needs to step in in those type of moments. If the referee is either not noticing or doesn't have, or, or, or doesn't isn't perceiving what we're watching at home, there needs to be a, a, an adult in the room. We're seeing this in boxing. I don't know if you saw the first Deontay Wilder or Luis Ortiz fight. They're going to yeah. be rematching November twenty third. Yep. One of the big issues in that fight was after Wilder got knocked around in round seven and almost dropped and stopped. They stopped the start of round eight and did a health check on him, and it took about 30 seconds. The doctor came in, crowds booing, saying, what are you doing? You're giving the, the bigger name fighter a chance to recover. But that was a New York commission changed the rules so they didn't have another Magomed situation where, where right. you have you know some real tragedies in the ring. I think it's time to, uh, I don't think that ruins the sport or takes from it when it's so obvious that someone's one-sided and is not going to win this fight. Here is where we are on this one, and this is the thing that everyone needs to wake up to. We are in a place where a guy like this can fight in the UFC. The commentator knows it's messed up. By the way, it wasn't just Michael Bisping, it was Trevor Whitman as well. Um, the audience at home knows it's messed up. The commission knows it's messed up because they removed the referee from ever being involved in that fight night again, so even they clearly were alarmed by his behavior. And yet, uh, I've not spoke to Mark Montoya, I'm trying to get him on my radio show today, we'll see how that goes. Um, they didn't do anything, his father didn't do anything, the fighter himself, I don't know what you expect, which all tells you one thing. Someone's going to have to die before anything yeah. changes. And I hate to put it in those terms, it's true. but you cannot rationally convince these coaches uh, or anybody else who is involved in one of these situations. Anything went wrong. You go back to the Raquel Pennington situation. She literally turns to her corner and says, I quit. I'm done. Right? And they put her back out there. She gets her nose broken, and then she loses. And then they go on a media tour right after that and say, no, 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 we understand the fighter better. If you understand the fighter better, you are actually in, a, in some ways a worse position because you have this irrational belief in their upside. You're like, you love a person so much, you think so highly of them, you cannot soberly, clearly, you cannot soberly assess um, what they're capable of doing. Now, Mark Montoya is, I have such high respect for him. I hope to get a chance to talk to him later. This is the point. I've talked to Brandon Gibson about this, too. He, he, there's a couple he wants back. You talk to Greg Jackson, there's a couple of times they didn't stop a fight. They want one back. I suspect over time Mark Montoya will come to that because he's smart and he's rational. This is the other thing to consider, Brian. It's not bad coaches who are doing this. It's the very best ones. Brian, uh, Brandon Gibson is one of our very best coaches. Mark Montoya is one of our very best coaches. If even they aren't doing this, what that tells you is there is a massive, massive culture problem that we have that will not be remedied yes. until tragedy strikes. 
That well, is exactly where we are These coaches become headed. like fathers. And in boxing, you have a lot of actual father-son combinations his and dad, trainers. His dad was in the and corner. the trainers, the fathers can be the worst advocates for their own son because it's such a macho uh, you know, mindset on sort yeah. of, no, he can do this. But it is normal in boxing for a, the commissioner to jump on the apron between rounds, overrule the referee, and wave off the fight. I don't ever see that in MMA. Yeah, here's the other problem, too. I was going back and listening to some of the instructions that the referee was giving. There was one time where Gifford was getting banged on, and... I remember uh, the referee saying, get out of there. But actually, you're, that's not what you're supposed to be saying. You're supposed to be saying, improve your situation or yes. improve your position. You don't actually have to flee the situation. He was totally out of his depth. What did he take, 157 strikes? And here's the other part. They kept saying, well, if he gets him on the ground, he's much better. Not really. Mike yes. Davis had knee on belly, which is like, the boy Derek in the back will tell you this, knee on belly is what you do to white belts who show up day one. And then he was elbowing him from knee on belly, dude. That is like big brother, like I'm going to steal your girlfriend at the prom yeah. move. And then in the end, when he was banging on the third round, he had him in leg drag. Leg drag is like, please put me in side control because I have no control what's happening over my body. Your legs go one way, your shoulders go the other. He had him in leg drag. Like there was, it'd be one thing if he was taken to the ground, Brian, and then taken the back. He'd be like, all right, well, I mean, there's something there. He was getting dominated everywhere everywhere it was a complete and total failure of everyone this way, and look darren elkins wouldn't have a career if you stop fights early right there are moments where a guy usually though a slugger that's the thing luke usually it's a slugger that you give leeway when he's getting dominated because you're like look one punch can change everything i don't think it's that same situation with a submission expert i don't think like it's not as easy to just land you no, know it submissions would be a, are hard to do that's why there's so, so few of them so it's not you know anyone that wants to argue well you can't have comfort behind dramatic wins if you police fights this way well you also can't have long careers or life. And if we had our own MK ADCC tournament, I think Kinger's tapping you. Yeah, he might. Uh, I'm I, old I think and frail Derek's and tired. Um, right. But the point being is, lastly on this, this is not somebody being like, oh, um, well, if the best coaches are doing this, then they, maybe they're not the best coaches. No, no, no. This is like weight cutting. It's pervasive at all levels of the game yeah. to the point where the best coaches, and Mark Montoya is among our very best, are still not immune from this. That that's really the consideration. And then lastly, too, go back and listen to what he's screaming to his to Thomas Gifford. Gifford wasn't listening to any of it. It's like your guy's getting beat well, up. The, he's the getting dude was dominated. Concussed, he was like, he's getting dominated in the own scenario where he's supposed yeah. to be uh, good at, and he's not listening. It's like if you don't stop it, then I, I don't know. I don't know what to yeah. tell you. I don't know what to tell you. By the way, right. oh, just real quick, did Mike Davis look great or just be, just favorable matchmaking? Dude, he took that five on five days' notice. He looked awesome. Yeah.